Hello, my fellow gnomes, and welcome back to episode 7, when we're going to be talking about events. Now, what are events, you may be asking? Well, if you remember in our last two episodes, we've been looking at functions. So if we're looking at one of these older scripts, we see I had this block of code, and then I called the code uh, down here, and we referenced it, and we sent this data along with it as well, and then that was added within the function. And if we also looked over inside our ball script, we had to call that function over here on line 5 to clone it. Now, what if, I'll come out of this, what if we wanted to have a piece of code and wanted that to actually run and react to something that's happening inside of the game? Well, for this, we use something called an event. So head back into our ball script from the previous episode, and we can delete all of this. We're gonna, we'll keep this uh, variable for the ball at the top, might as well. And then on the new line, we're going to say ball. And remember, if we want to call a function, we'd normally use the colon. And when I do that, you can see I've got these suggested functions represented by that purple box next to them. And when we've been referencing the properties, we've normally used a dot. And when I do that, you can see an index of the ball. And we can see these properties represented by the blue box next to them. Now, if I hold down the down arrow key and go all the way down to the bottom of this list, we should see right at the bottom, we've got these ones with a yellow uh, sort of lightning rod. Now, those are not properties, but they're events. And the one we're going to start off by looking at is the touched event. This is kind of a classic example. So I'll press enter and it'll autocomplete ball.touched. And so touched is an event rather than a property. And what we can do is that we can then connect it into a function. So type the colon, and then we type connect, uppercase C, and then we have an opening and closed bracket like that. So again, it's a bit like a function, this is. We've got the colon and the opening and closed bracket. And what this touch is going to do is want to connect it to a function. So let's write at the top a function now we can say function ball touched we'll call it okay and then inside of here we'll just print out the ball has been touched and now inside our connect we just type the name of our function which in this case is ball touched now what essentially all this is doing is this is just listening out this connect is going to listen out for whenever the ball is touched, whenever that event is fired, and then it's going to hook it in to this function that we've just defined. So now when we run the game, this function should fire and this print statement should appear in the output. So if we look at our game, we can see when the ball drops to the ground, it should be running anyway. So we just click run, wait for the ball to drop to the ground, and we can see the ball has been touched, is fired two times in the workspace already. And if I stop and I enter with my player, so the ball's dropped to the ground. And then if I run over to the ball as well, when I hit the ball, we see it's firing loads more times. It's fired 62 times now. For every single touch, we get another print in the statement. So now my code is sort of interacting with the actual game world in, in real time rather than having to define exactly when I want things to happen. So the touch event is pretty powerful. Now you might have noticed that we didn't actually have to have an opening and closed bracket like that when we called it. Now this is because it's sort of wrapped inside of the connect statement already and this event touched actually sends some data along with it. So if you remember with our functions, I'll open up that script we sent this data, we sent these numbers of 10 and 22, and then we received them as parameters in the function. So we could then use them like variables here. So with our events, uh, the touch event actually sends information about what part is touching the ball. So we can set that up as a parameter now. So we'll type the name of the variable, we say um, part, we could say, and then down here in our print statement, we can say the ball has been touched by, 
and then comma and the value of that part variable. Now, if we click play again, we should see it says the ball has been touched by part and part. And if we touch it here, we can now see it's telling us the name of the different parts of our character. So we can see right hand, upper torso, left upper leg. If I jump on top of it, we should see my feet and legs hitting it. And then if I hit it with a side, I can get the, the arms and the torso hitting it as well. So how can we make better use of this? Because this isn't really very useful, is it? Having a print statement about who's touching the ball. How about we have it so we can actually detect when the ball enters into the goal, when we score a goal. Because at the moment, even if we manage to get this ball in for a goal, if I can score, push, there we go. Um, well, it's going to go in and nothing's going to happen, is it? That's kind of it. What I'd really like is uh, to have the score tallied up and then the ball to go back to the middle again so we can kick off once more. So how about we stop the game and we add a part over here and over here inside of the goals. So add in a part. And we probably don't want it to be that color, do we? But uh, that can be fine. We'll set transparency to 0.5. And then we're going to move it so it's behind the goal. And it fills the entire area behind the goal like so. Okay. And so as soon as the ball touches this part, then we can start to detect things and have things happen. So let's make sure it's anchored and also disable collisions on it. We'll rename the part uh, goal one, I suppose. And then we'll add in a new script into the workspace script. We'll rename this goal script. And then in here, we can type goal one equals workspace dot goal one. So we're creating a variable for that object. And then we want to detect when something hits it. So goal one dot touched connect. And then we could give the name of the function like we did over here. Now, there's actually another way of defining a function, which you probably see done a bit more often. Rather than giving a named function like this, we can actually just do it all within this same connect statement. I can just write function like this. Open, close bracket, new line. And you notice when I do so, I have the end as well. So I've got that. Just a normal looking function like that, but it's now wrapped within this connect statement. Now what this means is I can't then call the function from anywhere else because it hasn't got a name. Uh, it's only connected in to this event. It's only connected here. So this is the only place that the function exists, but that doesn't matter because I'm not wanting to call it from anywhere else. So now within this function, uh, we're gonna want to get that data about what's touching it. So we'll get the part, and then we can use a if statement that we've looked at before. So we'll say if part dot name. So we're checking the name property equals equals. Remember, it's two equals because we're doing a comparison rather than setting a value like up here. Equals equals ball. And we do this in double quotes because it's text or a string. And make sure that ball is spelt exactly the same as your ball object in the workspace. Then press new line and we have an end as well. So we've completed this block of code now. And if that happens, then we're going to print out and we'll say go. And let's just check this is working first of all. OK, so I'm going to click play. And you see, I've already got in the output the prints from the ball script. Now, let's just check if I run into this object, this goal area, we're not going to see anything in the output, which is good because all of the parts of my character aren't called ball. But hopefully now, if I push the ball into the goal, 
and we're going to see goal. Did you see that down there in the output? So it's recognized now that the ball has hit this area. And so it's printed out goal. Fantastic. Okay, so we've hit stop. And I think we'll just disable the uh, the ball script for now. We don't have any more print statements getting in the way. And now how about we check um, once we've scored our goal, we want the ball to get teleported back to the middle, don't we? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move our ball now back into the roughly in the middle. I think that's about right. And we're going to do a similar thing to what we did before when we're doing that uh, cloning and looping and so on. So I'm going to save the original position of the ball. Original position equals uh, ball. So workspace dot ball dot position. Let's create a variable for our ball as well. Ball equals workspace dot ball. And then we can use just ball dot position. Oh, I copied and pasted the wrong thing there. Ball dot position. That's a bit easier, isn't it? And so now instead of saying if part dot name equals ball, we could actually just say if part equals equals ball because we've saved that object as a variable so we can compare if this object is the same as the object that has touched and fired this event that we've connected. Okay, hopefully you're following there. So now that we've checked that it is the same object and we've printed out that they've scored, now let's move that ball back to its original position. So ball dot position equals original position, the one that we've saved. So now let's click play and see if it's all working. So we're going to dribble the ball towards the goal, get around the goalkeeper, and the ball's disappeared immediately, but it's printed out goal and it's teleported back to the middle, just like we wanted. And if we like, we can do the same thing for the other side. So we'll click stop, and I'm going to duplicate this, control D, drag the cloned one over to the other side. I'll rename this goal two. I'll head back into my goal script. So now let's modify this print statement so we can say team one has scored exclamation mark. And then we're going to wait another two seconds and then we'll move the ball back. And now we're going to need to detect the second goal. So we'll create a variable for that. Goal2 equals workspace.goal2. And we can copy and then paste all of this down here. And the only thing we need to check is this time we want to listen out for touches on goal2 rather than goal1. And we'll change the print statement to say team2 has scored. So now when I run the game, we can see we have our two goal areas. If I push the ball over to this side, you can see team two has scored. And then it's going to teleport back into the middle. And this time, let's see if we can score this direction. Come on, in we go. And yes, team one has scored and back into the middle. So now we've almost got a bit of a working game here. Now, there's certainly a lot more we can do and a lot more we can still play about with, but hopefully that's got you started with using events and maybe you can have a bit of a play about with your own ideas. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.